Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in the final episode of the Tsar and Soviet submod for TNO, of course, the last days of Europe, in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Russian people Tsardom. We've got to talk about success. Low star. This time, Nikolai Sharon was tasked with creating a fighter that could quickly mobilize in the air. Nikolai Sharon, when he heard of this, he understood this. It is necessary to make sure that the length of the takeoff and run when the plane is trying to take off or vice versa to land were greatly reduced. Sharon was passionate about fighters, who suggested to his entire team to add additional lifting engines that would help the aircraft take off and land quickly. The production was started. It was decided to use this as a modification, namely, one of the old Soviet air aircraft was taken. It was re-equipped to make new realities, or meet new realities. The engine rockets were replaced, and additional lifting engines were added. The first test were carried out, which showed an improvement in performance. It was found that with the lifting engines turned on, the takeoff speed decreased from 390 to 285 kilometers per hour. The landing speed decreased from 315 to 225 kilometers per hour, and the takeoff length decreased from 17, 1170 to 500 meters, and the mileage from 1000 to 560. That was a big plus. Moreover, the lifting engines could even increase the speed of the aircraft itself. Belozersky was on the podium when he saw a soaring eagle high in the sky. Cutting through the clouds, he was delighted. Soon the plane itself, which was called the TE-58VD, began to land. Everything was done quickly and without hesitation. Belozersky was so impressed with the project that he immediately returned to his office and announced the mass production of these fighters. The eagle had spread its wings, and Groznaya Sila. As obvious to everyone that Russia is too big, both in size and influence of the world to simply exist. Our territories are vast, but at the same time we will be weak in front of other superpowers, no matter how hard we try. We don't have nuclear weapons and all of our labor can turn to dust if, we, if the enemy just drops bombs on us, given that we will not be able to eventually respond to such an audacious attack or strike. The enemy is all more likely to want to use nuclear weapons. Russia needs nuclear weapons. We'll become a new superpower that will have place, its place under the sun. We'll have to go a long way from the idea to the realization of our ambitions. Belzerki summoned Vladimir Gil to his office. He came and... He came and Gil started a conversation. Vladimir, I need to give you a very important assignment. Berzeski began to speak. What kind of assignment are we talking about? Gil said, frowning slightly. Our state needs nuclear weapons. I already have instructed a scientist to start preparing or preparing for the creation of nuclear weapons, but I need a curator for the project. I consider you the most worthy of all to become the curator of the project, Grozny, in honor of Ivan the Terrible himself, as you understand. You will report to me on the entire progress of the project, and you have to lead the people in the project. Vladimir Gil, without uh, thinking for a long time, said, <clears throat> That's right. I'm taking over the project management. Oh, that's nice. Remember, Russia needs these nuclear weapons. The enemies are around us, and even the Americans would not be able to save us in the event of such an unusual war. We need weapons quickly. The Tsar bomb of all bombs will defend the motherland, as are doing extraordinary conquest of Soviets. I can't remember if it was uh, in, the la in the last episode, so if you want to do this, please go right ahead. As well as done there, too. I think I did, but I could be very wrong. But if you want to read that, please go right ahead. I apologize if I didn't read that, so. Maybe the Dragunov. The wealth of the Taust. Ooh. State GDP factor? Let's do a uh, development of the Arctic. The northern regions of the country, the so-called Arctic, is a storehouse of useful resources. The resources that have, been explored, that have been explored have so many resources that allow us to meet the demand for domestic production of the country, but these resources are not available to us due to the fact that we simply cannot get to them. Like the development of Siberia, we must also begin the development of the Arctic and prepare them for the use and exploitation of the territory. We have to build roads to places where a person would not normally get there, and in addition, create infrastructure and populate new cities with people who will bravely help us in the development of the Arctic. They will get everything they want to return for the work that will ensure Russia's prosperity. And I can't remember if I converted these divisions already, but it looks like we have converted them, so we'll save a pretty penny for at least a couple months. Maybe not a whole bunch of months, but at least a couple months. <coughs> One of the comments says, Is what you said about Tabby true, or are we just joking? Also, can you give us a link for the submod? Um, I think, uh, at the time it's recording, there's, uh, ooh, develop physics stuff. There should be already there. Nothing right there. What Wrath of Heaven still we need to do. Um, uh, prove academic base. Actually, where are we for academic base? That's actually really, really good. But we can do it anyways. Why not? There you go. Uh, link to the sub mod. I'm pretty sure I did that. But new frontiers, new questions. Oh yeah, the, the link is in the uh, in the description below if you want to check out the sub mod for it right now. New frontiers, new questions. Like I said, according to the regulations, uh, the Congress of the Soviet should take uh, place once a quarter. But this time, a special case. Kazanbek announced the beginning of an extraordinary Congress schedule for the near future. The reason was the expansion of the state to like, Siberia, and along with the untold riches that were there, we also got sores. Ooh. The day of Congress of Soviets has come. There were representatives of both the very first Congresses, and those who represented completely new territories, hastily created so that someone would represent the interests of their territory. Gentlemen, comrades and compatriots, Kazovic began a speech with these words with an unusually fire intonation. We have achieved unprecedented success recently. Our country is able to go to Siberia. After such a statement, a roar of applause and a loud hurrah rose in the hall. It lasted about a minute after the applause began to subside. The Prime Minister continued. Our people come even closer to the unification of Russia under one flag, and people are more and more eager to unite our great motherland every day, and we've already shown the whole world that we're capable of. The roar of applause rose again, but not as intense as it was the first time. Another hum, Kazanbek reminded everyone why the Congress was convened. But it's not time to stop. Today we have large territories outside the Urals, which extend 
into the borders of Central Siberia. In the new territories that we have to come to, it is obvious that there are many problems that we can face. After the fighting, we need the peaceful integration of Western Siberia into our state to ensure order in the new lands, to provide conditions for economic development, and assert the power of the young Russians. We need to create an action program for today aimed at solving these issues and to start implementing our plan. The work began at the end of the extraordinary Congress of Soviets. An action program was developed aimed at solving problems in Western Siberia. The volume of the plan was, if not smaller, than at least the same in size of the very first Congress of Soviets, where the first action program was adopted. Now there's a plan, and you can start implementing it. We will help the Russians unite. The wealth is a talus. <coughs> On the territory of the region. According to the certain data, there are warehouses with weapons that were made during a period of the similar region. Robber warlords bought high quality weapons from Zotelis for a lot of money while they did not even think about the fact that the masters of weapons themselves have entire warehouses filled to the brim with high quality weapons. With the help of such warehouses, it would be impossible to arm an army that would be comparable to our own in the terms of capacity and perhaps even unite the whole of Russia. If the data does not lie, then the warehouses remain untouched. Therefore, we must immediately open them and take all the wealth of Zotelis for ourselves. And I want to get research facilities next. I think that'd be really good to do. Yeah, we could definitely do that one. We're going to have modern research facilities, though. That's not, that's not bad. No benefits, but no penalties, which is actually pretty good. 3.2 billion surplus. That GDP, GDP ratio should go down. 4% uh, growth. Overall, pretty good. Pretty darn good. This somewhat does give us some weird like uh, fonts for the numbers, which I think might be the original fonts that Tiano had, but I could be wrong. Meaning with Dragunov, though. The Dragunov, leader of the Zatals, and his comrade Kalashnikov occupied a very ad advantageous position during the struggle of the field commanders and pseudo-states. Profiting from the desire of pseudo-leaders to rob Russia further, he sold his military products to everyone, starting from the legendary AK-47s, ending even with artillery weapons. <clears throat> We have to admit that he made some of the best machine guns in the territory of Russia, since he every every highly respected field commander has had to buy weapons from the Zatels to fight his opponents, which suggests that he is a recognized master with golden hands throughout Russia. Those men have seen found themselves in the territory of the Tsar's Union, and we are obliged to use their services so that they may continue to develop weapons, but only for our army. Our state will get only advantages from this, and Dragunov and his people have the opportunity to live comfortably, at least for now. We do both. And Orden Shot Bogan kind of fell apart, which is, you know, fine with us because we don't really care. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Meet with the Raganov and the trip to Washington. The experience of Belzersky's personal trip to the USA turned out to be a beneficial one in terms of efficiency. The embassy order, which was formed relatively recently, was able to establish first contacts with OS OFN countries, but our diplomatic efforts to strengthen ties with the West should not be weakened, because we need them about as much as they need us. Hmm. Now, though, to make new efforts again to expand a diplomatic ties more effectively, and for this to happen, Belzersky must fly to Washington once again. <coughs> In which we get a non-aggression pact. I apologize for my coughing, but holy crap. We're going back to America. I have a good feeling no enemy is going to be able to stand up to us. Oh. Oh. Please don't end in nuclear hellfire. Please. That'd be bad for everybody. Maybe except for uh, Himmler. Is Himmler still alive? Is he dead? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's old. Come on, Borman. It's hard to tell. Because uh, the colors are very, very similar to each other. But the king and the master of the craft. Belozersky. Uh, thinking about the Dragunov's team, I had clearly mixed feelings. On one hand, you admired the fact that Yevgeny Fedorovich and his people were beginning, being in definitely not the easy situation, were able to find a place under the sun as a telos, and were able to build a whole business based on the arms trade. Only this allowed them to survive in such a complex economic ruin and anarchy after the defeat in the Great Patriotic War. <clears throat> On the other hand, they cannot be called heroes over time. Yes, their talents are undeniable, but what were these skills spent on? They went for weapons that were sold to pseudo-rulers of Russia, who killed other Russians subordinate to other pseudo-rulers. If it is possible to say that they are guilty of, it is that they aided the robbery on the territory of Russia. No, the most correct definition that they will be given to them is that they were scoundrels against their will. They did not choose their own fate, it was their life that forced them to switch to such a way of existence, and they got out of it, like many millions of Russians, as best they could, however. Times have changed, more favorable times have come for Dragunov's people, which contribute to favorable work, and we want to invite them, no matter what, to our design bureaus. Belzersky personally offered Dragunov a job in the design bureau by a phone. He promised to provide them with everything necessary for them to start work and do it effectively and efficiently. Dragunov expressed his gratitude without further discussion and agreed to a new job. For many people, Dragunova is not only the way to live, but also something like a hobby. And therefore, we're not just refuse in the front of the Tsar himself with his proposal. Find a job you like and you won't have to work a single day in your life. Gifts of nature. Having created a new infrastructure in the territory of the Arctic, we can proceed to the immediate stage of the development of local resources. The population that will work in these places is already waiting for the first supplies of tools and materials for the extraction of these resources, such as oil, iron, gas, and others. The heroes of the Arctic will be imprinted in the memory of the people as laborers who dare to go to the north and help Russia be reborn. 
In addition, we possess new technologies and resource extraction, and we must apply them to the rest of Western Siberia in order to increase the extraction of minerals in these territories. Then, when we do all this, nature itself will reward with its gifts for the work and perseverance shown. <clears> oh, <throat> that's 70 days? Holy crap! I was not expecting that. Oh! Oh! Whoa! There's even more here! I didn't even know that! Oh, that's really cool! I like that so much! Thank God we can actually do something. The Polish Legion. Oh my goodness, I didn't even know about this stuff. Okay. Pull a soldier of the Russian army. That's actually really cool. Russification. Oh my goodness. Return to the steps. Oh, we just go to war with all of them. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. Let's save that for after we t take these guys out first. I kind of want to save it. Because that gives us something else to do as well after that. So that's actually really cool. Um, yeah, guess the nature, I guess, is up next. Partial success. Nine lives. Nikolai Shannon received another state order that needed to be urgently fulfilled. To create a heavy combat armor suit for special forces. Troops. An armor suit for special forces? Why? That's exactly the question that Sharon had, but then he thought about it. After all, this is stuff for the special forces, for whom mobility is not so important, but on the contrary. Firepower and survival against elite groups, so we gotta work. Air defense. First, you need to find a mature that will not interact with anything, not even with chemicals. Moreover, the suit must be bulletproof, but the weight of such a shoot, shoot or suit should not be too big. Mobility is still important, and so was found a strong metal composite alloy, which included a huge amount of metals, which gave such a suit resistance to everything, but... The only problem was that the whole set weighs 30 kilograms. You could only walk in it if you didn't want to die in the suit. After creating such a suit, experiments were started. A soldier could with a warrior one kit calmly pass a test strip filled with deadly traps. Even an experienced soldier was afraid to go there. That was a dizzying success. Now Belazesco is standing on the podium, watching how his robotic soldier easily passes a test strip. He knows that his soldier was passing, though confidently, but very slowly. The kit was too heavy. But, perhaps, maybe. It would be better to use it specifically in shock operations, using the surprise effect, but no one can simply escape from such a monster. You just need to find a strategy and pr Project Eden. It's obvious that with the development of uh, various information technologies, this has also affected the military industry. Encryption methods have become more complicated. Decryption is now almost impossible by human forces, and therefore we need to unless machines capable of cracking um, <coughs> uh, blah, 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 these codes. In addition, the amount of data is also growing at a geometric rate. We need to restore them, restore them somewhere. Therefore, our scientists propose to create a supercomputer, Eden, which will be the first of all its step in Russia. By creating a computer, we'll be technologically ahead of all our enemies for decades to come. At least, that's a hope. Business thoughts. After we signed the main agreements that were proposed by Belozersky himself, they decided to go to Washington again, or again, propose a number of agreements that will be concluded in the near future. Well, now it's time to increase trade relations with the countries of the OFN begin ra uh, close to rapprochement with the countries of the West so they can be more favorable to us. Having crossed the land of the U.S. once and again, and I found himself in Washington. Uh, Belzerski went to the White House, where it was already expected. When he arrived, he got out of the car and entered the White House, and after a fairly short conversation with President Bennett, he almost immediately began talking about politics. Belzerski proposed to the President a new package of trade agreements with the U.S. and the CIS countries. CIS countries? Is it Star Wars? Saying that now Russia can supply more resources, since the young Russians now own territories with the natural resources, and in addition, he further proposes to increase the supply of necessary goods to the Tsarist Union. Huh. The U.S. President Bennett says that these agreements can be concluded, and therefore he agrees. Following this, Belzerski proposes to sign a non aggression pact between the OFN countries and the Tsarist Union. This pact is important in the language of the diplomacy, since by such a pact, countries sign the countries of signing parties to resolve all disputed issues by only peaceful means. In fact, a very reasonable step for Belzerski in the long term in the future. If everything goes well, Russia will be able to put forward its demands on Eastern Europe, frankly, without the fear that the U.S. will use its weapons in disputes with us. But, the American president did not immediately accept this agreement. He sees it all perfectly, but after thinking about it, he still decided to agree and sign this non aggression pact or treaty with the Tsarist Union. <coughs> Belzerski could only guess what the American president was thinking about at the moment. Are the Americans not so supportive of us? The devil will sort him out, but the contract was signed, and this is the main indicator of success. After this, Belzerski returned back to Russia to continue working. We have vague doubts about Siberian expanses. <coughs> With the inclusion of the new territories in our state, there was a need to update maps and include local administration in our system. On the territory of Siberia, the first councils have already been formed and established, which will represent the interests of the regions and Congress soon. We have printed enough maps, it will also entail reconciliation on the part of the Western Siberian population with us, since they will be able to realize themselves as part of the United Russia. Which will be good, as we get a lot more fuel and a lot more uh, chromium. Ah, oh, very good. The Omsk problem. The Siberian Black League, which was on the territory of the Western Siberia, has deeply penetrated its roots in the territories that we now own. Uh, even after breaking the tree of the Black League, its roots remain and they are growing deeper in the territory of Western Siberia. The soldiers of Yazov, fanatically loyal to the idea, their idea of the great trial of Germany, are ready to sacrifice their lives for the sake of perhaps a noble but terrible goal. We have to admit that the Black League embodies a noble aspiration that we ourselves will focus on in the future. The liberation of the motherland from the Nazis and punish them no matter what. Nevertheless, their methods and the scale of their aspirations nevertheless contradict the young Russians. In addition, they will never negotiate with those who are not members of the Black League and therefore will pose a serious danger to us. However, we will have to fight. 
I want to be out better armed military professionals and please go right ahead. An excellent, excellent thing. A professional army? That's actually very strong. Having a professional army is very, very good. Only one above that is Spartan Discipline, so. Very nice. The arms problem in uh, army integration. After uh, the fighting in Western Siberia, many troops of hostile states surrounded it, not so much because the hostile government surrounded, surrendered to us, but because they still recognize themselves as Russians. They simply refuse to continue shooting at their own brethren, realizing that few people will benefit from this. Those who fought against us, until the very last, obviously, are good cadres who, in general, will be valuable for our army. Our army may only benefit if we can include in our armed forces those who surrendered after the fighting and those who fought with us until the very last. Those will be given the opportunity to enter the service of the Tsar General. <coughs> very nice. What do we have here? Air stuff? Sure, why not? Interceptors? Why not? We love interceptors. The arms problem. The Black League's shortfall. The strongest squad of the Black League that remained after his defeat was the Larzenko's squad. His squad was one of, oh hello, uh, many fragments of the Black League that remained after the defeat. His detachment was located approximately where the center of the entire Black League once was, but was forced to be in areas where there was at least some force in order to hide from a direct clash with the enemies. The Larzenko, despite his baggage of skills, owed, uh, hello. Uh, a squad that although seemed qu quite capable to itself, in fact that it's a composition not tatters, which doesn't make any sense, which half of them were not dressed properly. Uh, his efforts to imp improve the justice within his squad improved the situation from hopeless to better, nevertheless, a number of objective reasons did not change the situation in the bud. Many did not have Black League bandages, as the fabric was used for bandages. On the face of some, hunger brought to them to the point that they had uh, circles, black circles under their eyes, um, and someone had simply collected from exhaustion, or collapsed from exhaustion. The armament also left much to be desired, but the squad was armed with a variety of weapons ranging from outdated PPSH 41s, ending with some AK-47 like assault rifles. The only thing that distinguished them from the bandits was the presence of the entire T-3485 tank, which certainly could pose a serious danger to the rest, and yet what exactly cannot be taken away from the soldiers of the Black League is their fighting spirit and desperate determination to fight for their idea. <coughs> uh, the paradists of the squad are trying to keep in touch with their other squads, smaller and very weak in comparison with his squad. Oh. However, every day there are fewer and fewer detachments that still get in touch until the connection is completely cut off. In the language of the Black League detachments, this means that they either went missing or were destroyed by and by whom it is difficult to say because recently the young Russians have come here, at least as rumors have or heard beyond the Urals. The pathetic remnants of the Batovites have also become active, which do not pose any danger to the young Russians. As soon as the old soldiers arrived, they began to form up in the line of four. Well, the cadets stood behind Larazenko. When everyone gathered, he began a speech which had been trying to work in, out in his head for a long time, so it sounded truthful about fiery. Comrades, of the Black League. Our scouts reported that an army of young Russians were moving in our direction. Our squad was the very last of all who remained alive. Our comrade died fighting the traitors of the motherland to the last drop of blood. Our brothers sacrificed their lives so that our motherland would atone for the sins of the past, and we remained the last stronghold of the Black League, and the last chance to save our great motherland. Our idea of the redemption of Russia lives in the hearts of people. And only thanks to us, our cause has not yet perished. I have to tell you that tomorrow will be the most important day for all of you. Tomorrow there will be a fight, perhaps a loss, but extremely important for all of our future generations. Let the whole Russians know that you have not bowed to our heads. We will not obey anyone, neither the young Russians, nor the communists, nor the Batovians. Let the whole of Russia know that we have not given up, and that we fought for the cause of our children, brothers, sisters, and mothers, that we fought for our land, home, and every Russian person. A Virag will not show us mercy, so let it. We will respond with tenfold hatred for our opponents. We will not. We will pay tenfold for our death, and we will win either here or we will die free and unconquered. Long live the Black League. And I'll get to your work. Tomorrow's a decisive day. Dig trenches, and they'll become your forests or your grave. Larzenko said, "Finally, victory or death." The man thanks to whom uh, we have everything. Lenin's name, as well as the names of other people in history, is extremely controversial. If ever any something can be said about him, then people feel love and hatred for this man, even though he is, is according to the propaganda, a traitor and a murderer of the Russian Empire. But our people cannot imagine the life if it were not for Lenin. Vladimir, uh, 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 Vladimir Ilyevich's uh, uh, contribution to the history of Russia and the whole world cannot be overestimated. Look at that, that's pretty good. It's possible to talk for a long time about what would have happened if he did not exist, or he did not exist. Perhaps history would have been a completely different affair. Oh, look at this. Um, gone a different, completely different way, but, but we have more pressing problems to worry about. Um, what, we had that event, but I'm not sure what it does. Requiem for the Pest. Nice. Forward to United Russia. Russia, as it, if from old, began to get up from its knees again. Great ancestors of the past, such as Ivan the Third, the Great, uh, were able to liberate Russia from the Tatar, Tatar oppression of the past. Indeed, Russia became strong at the moment under the leadership of great people. But I must say that it has also become so thanks to the great Russian people. Sods of old, the story repeats. Since the end of the battle for Western Russia and up to the present moment, we've made a long journey that deserves to be the beginning of a stage of national revival. Our Tsar General Sergei Belozersky did a lot so that Russia could once again raise its head high. Our people and their most trustworthy ruler, and most worthy ruler, have gone through this difficult but no less great path to regain the, pro the prosperity, unity, and security that we lost after 1917. Also, it would have been impossible without the Tsar, without the people, and without the single goal that Russia was moving. Well, Russia will become one. The people do not want to continue living under different flags, and therefore we must win in the, in the further struggle for our united Russia. It does not matter whether peace 
through, whether peacefully through bloodshed, or unite the people. The fact already happened, and it will only be a matter of time, of method and time. That's why we, that's why forward United Russia. Okay. Inspection of two men. The us just get decided to take a walk through the new territories that were directly annexed relatively recently. We need to take a break from the work which has already tired us during this time. Together with his guards, he went to two men. Um, as one of the largest cities in western Siberia. In the end, he, he as the owner of this land, had to look at the newly conquered territories with his own eyes, and so, so he decided to kill two birds with a st single stone. The question of what two men looks like in architectural terms is of great interest to him. And as he was informed early in two men, there was a government in Kaganovich, a socialist who supported the little-known Joseph Stalin in the struggle against Nikolai Bukharin. How would have history gone if Stalin had more strength than would have defeated Bukharin? Belarusovsky thought about this moment, not even paying attention to what majestic buildings were erected in two men. Belarusovsky could only get imagine the consequences of such a scenario where Joseph Stalin became the leader of a huge country, Soviets. Perhaps the story ended more tragically even for the Russian people than under Bukharin. It's possible that the story would be uh, the same in our reality. What if, it not, what if it had been different, though? What if the parallel reality of the Russian people were able to defeat the Nazis? I'm afraid to imagine how it would look, and from such a thought, the spirit... Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm afraid of mentioning I'm looking for such a thought the spirit is taken away from the majesty and, the captivity, and captivates from the fear of what place uh, he would take in this world. Fortunately or unfortunately, the fate decreed quite differently. Speaking about the city itself, the architecture of all these buildings causes pride for the Russian people, who were able to build it even under hail of Nazi bombs. Tall houses are a luxury even for the capital of Belizersky, not to mention the provinces. However, all these buildings pay on the front of a seemingly clearly inferior architectural structure of the Lenin Mausoleum. Belzeski's attention was riveted to this building, since it was remarkable in itself among others, and what there was was literally the mummified body of Lenin, the man who created the revolution, and in fact laid the foundation for the future Russia. Thoughts of Stalin and Bukharin were smoothly replaced by the thoughts of Vladimir Ilovich, and even he said without a cyn certain cynicism, and said that if it weren't for this man, none of this would have happened, at least he could reason. If it were not for him and his party, then in the distant 60s, Belzeski would not have become the star of the Great Russia, which is now beginning to rise from his needs. If it had not been for him, there would have been neither the same Stalin nor the same Bukharin, and if it had not been for them, there would have been no what happened uh, in the Great Petrov War. There would have been no battle for Western Russia, there would have been no victory for the young Russian dream in the Russia. There would be nothing, but Lazarsky watched as his mausoleum was slowly being dismantled, because he decided to dismantle it and build a new house in its place. It was decided to bury Lenin's body of the calm soul. But Lazarsky did not prevent them from doing this, but he drew off the two men. What if our timeline is not real? Probably not. Department of Atomic Energies, obviously, in order to develop any nuclear technologies of both peaceful and military purposes, we will need to create a new department dedicated to nuclear technologies in general. We'll invite all prominent nuclear, uh, Russian nuclear physicists here to, to the new department, and they'll be able to develop these weapons for us. We'll get the Department uh, of Atomic Technologies everything that is necessary for scientists and for them to successfully create new technologies. Everything they need for research, we will provide first of all, and especially provide the best. After all, the life of an entire country depends on it. Apologies for qu reading quickly, but it is what it is. Just keep cutting down that debt. That'd be great. Oh, bottom proof there. Bottom proof there. Get some more drop tanks. Thank you. Better fighters. I mean, we got a crap ton of cast and whatnot, so I'm feeling pretty okay about all this stuff. A requiem for the past. I remember how it used to be easier to live. I remember how I used to have to come to obey my parents, teachers, commanders in the same case, mate, and just do the job. There was less responsibility and it was easier on my conscience. Work, just work and do what people say from above. They told me to get out of the road, go forward to the left, and march to the officer and get to the following order. They ordered to prepare an attack on the Reds, follow the order. Check the combat capability of the troops personally and inform your superior. Kazimbek gave a decree to make a report on the defense capability of Berezniki. Give the same order to the subordinates and wait for the result, and while you're waiting, prepare your statistics and give it to a friend. Now I'm the king, that's how high I've climbed. Now I need not so much the mind of the work of my clerks as to direct them. I just give an order or instruction to do this, do that, but the responsibilities become much higher. There's no one who could stand over me and supervise how I do my own work. Everything will fall solely on me, and no one can evaluate my work now that I'm at least evaluating it. At least it was easier, easier earlier. I did my homework. Get a grade, either a 5 or 2. If you get a 2, you need to work better, and if you get a 5, everything's fine. It was much easier than it is now. Just get the numbers. There are so many of them that my head is spinning. Yeah, now I remember now what it was like for Buhar and Nicholas II. We were the rulers of such a massive country. They didn't immediately understand whether they were right or wrong. They had no one to give instructions or to orders of what to do themselves. Perhaps it's to determine our future, and our only descendants will be able to evaluate their efforts. And history, how will history judge me? My mind tells me that I acted correctly. These were difficulties. There were failures, but there were also successes. Who will appreciate it? I have no superior from above, and the only people who fully appreciate my efforts are only in the distant future. The future is coming soon. I have no right to resign from this post, and I have, and I will go to the very end. I have to get to work further. Besides, no, this is very important. We only dream of peace. Uranium problem? On the territory of Russia, it's really reliably known that there are deposits of uranium more, but they have never found their use on the territory of our homeland. Years of stagnation and collapse have affected this, which is a very sad fact. Nevertheless, at the moment, we've already gained enough strength to start mining uranium in the territory where they are presumably available. In order to extract enough uranium, we need not only equip our mining teams with the safest and most modern research equipment, but also to start researching for completely new sources of uranium. Eventually, we'll be able to increase the total <clears throat> amount of uranium production needed to create a nuclear charge. 
nothing like a rock collapsing to kill everyone else. And we'll convert our divisions back to the other types of divisions um, <coughs> uh, at the beginning of the new year or so. Uh, how, how's research facilities? Oh, okay, wait, just a little bit longer. That's fine, that's fine. Gift from the USA? Oh, yes. Even despite all the measures we've used to accelerate the development of new nuclear technologies, this is not enough for us. It's obvious that sooner or later we'll develop these technologies by our own efforts, but Russia needs them as soon as possible, perhaps even now. We must agree with the US government, one of the superpowers, that they provide us with blueprints of all the necessary elements for nuclear technologies. The device of a nuclear bomb, the nuclear reactor, etc. Of course, the Americans may not give us these blueprints so easily, but it'll probably be more in favor than a negative or a minus. 9.3 billion. Hmm. Happy December, everybody! Happy, happy December. Kirk and Mines gonna hurt us a little bit, but that's alright. 5.77% growth. Because we are an OFN observer. 5% more GDP growth boosts. Boost. Boost. Nice. And we're gonna talk about blueprints as well. Kirk and Mines. There are mines of the territory of Western Siberia that in theory could have uranium. This information comes from the fact that old descriptions of the local places say that miners died in mass after working in these places. Nevertheless, if this is the case, the lot there is in the extraction of uranium there, which will allow us to expand the nuclear project to an acceptable size. In the end, we'll need any uranium ore, even if we have to dig it out with our fingers, as long as there's enough ore to extract uranium from. Almost roughly two political power a day. If you want to read about the wrath of heaven again, please go right ahead. Nice. Very good. <coughs> Almost 50% poverty rate, not bad. Academic base is doing very well. Uh, agriculture, how's agriculture looking? Oh, we're already on the highest level. How many divisions do they have? Blueprints. The arrival of a very important man with a black house. Expected. Unexpected for scientists, actually. The director of the department went out to talk to this person and find some, something... Uh, find out unexpectedly for himself that drawings were received not even for anything but for various nuclear technologies. The director looked at these drawings with great amazement. He could not continue surprised that they had arrived at all and the mention they were essentially giving themselves a ready-made answer to the questions about nuclear technology designs. Where did you get all this? The director of the department asked a question. Did you steal them? No, we had to negotiate with Americans by hook or by crook about the transfer of drawings and then these are not all the drawings but only part because they said you will do the rest yourself. You do realize now that the Americans have shot themselves in the knee, right? Or foot? The director asked another question. I think so, they understand it themselves. Something tells me that in the future they'll have problems with the Americans, and they'll regret it a thousand times more, but for us they're pursuing their own goals. Do you think these blueprints work? The director asked him a question that should have satisfied the interest even more. To be honest, I'm not sure myself. According to our allies, they are... They are. I really don't know, but rely on them. I think they'll be useful to you in any case. Now we're one step closer, one way or another. And time to convert you back to these divisions. Got for unification war? Do we not? Reunify? Oh, well. Yep, guess we can't, can't do this peacefully. <coughs> Excuse me. Grand showdown? Well, so be it. Return the steps. Central Asia. Oh, actually, uh, for Russia, from a resource point of view, does not have an extremely high value. Of course, there's oil and some other precious resources there, but specifically for Russia, it'll be just another drop on the sea of an already rich Russia. But the value of Central Asia lies primarily in its geopolitical location. It's literally our open southern flank from which it is convenient to attack on the territory of our country. Therefore, in order to protect our country, we cannot offer anything better than to capture Central Asia. This must prove an option for Russia, since the creation of all a collaborationist regime there may be riskier than a direct military invasion. But, first of all, we must seize Kazakhstan, which is our neighbor to the south. From that, we can act in both the direction of Siberia and in the direction of the south, further advancing on Central Asia. So, I'm not going to do that yet. I want to wait till we get this uh, research one done first. It'll take one more month. Which is fine. Attract foreign specialists. Our country has its own very experienced theoretical scientists in the field of nuclear physics, however. If we wanted to accelerate the work on the Grozny project, we need to attract even more scientists because there's a shortage of personnel in our country in this regard. Mainly, we'll be able to accelerate the work on the project by attracting foreign specialists to our country. The most important thing to do is hire them, and first of all, we must recruit nuclear physicists from the US and the Tyro FM as our main allies. It seems to us that it's in their interest that Russia, quite already a close ally, should be stronger and could help crush Nazi Germany in the future, but not be incinerated into nuclear ashes. Get back to the schools eventually. Cutting edge research facilities, improve academic base, two for one, nice. Artificial sun. Be it that it may, we've laid the first foundation for nuclear industries, both military and peaceful, to develop more than successfully. The pace of the creation of nuclear weapons is phenomenal, and they exceed even the most optimistic forecasts. Eventually, we will create nuclear weapons and become the new fourth superpower in the whole world, which even with our most sworn enemies, we'll have to be reckoned with. And even to represented by the USA. 
The world is rapidly changing, Russia will be one of the first powers to enter a new bright future, which has an important place in the store for it. We're so far from this great moment, and but every path begins with, of course, a small step. So what are we missing here? Probably attack planes. Transport helicopters. Other than that, not too much, actually. Hmm. I think he's a couple more guns, of course. Uh, I don't want to really learn anything else too much. Oh, wait. There's transport helicopters right here. Oh, that's attack helicopters. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Alright, so let's go here. Another month level of that stuff done, which would be great. Get more output. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize for my coughing. I've been coughing quite a bit lately at the time of this recording, so I apologize for it. Hopefully I'm not sick. There we go. Let's go and do that. It'll be fine. That's a crap ton of planes. We'll get there. Hopefully. Hopefully we can hold these guys back. Inspection. The character of the project, Vladimir Gale, came to the Department of Nuclear Technologies in order to find out personally and see how the work and the development of this industry is progressing. He found the workers in the midst of work, and he had no right to interfere with them doing their job. The only thing that happened was that the scientists always pay attention to an unusual person dressed military-like, unlike all of the people dressed in white coats. Every time, he told these scientists not to be distracted from their work, although perhaps few people understood what kind of person came to this department at all. Gale and his clerk turned to the director of the department. We care to ask him things first of a general plan about how, how the work is progressing, what difficulties arise, and then move down to more clarifying questions. Overall, the answers are encouraging. While more is pointy, money is pouring into the grousing project, it will go at record pace, and perhaps in the near future, Russia will get nuclear weapons, but as soon as the money stops pouring into the project, the project will slow down and the weapons will all be received much later than we could have expected at all. Otherwise, there are no big difficulties, except that it would be necessary to get even more scientific personnel who could work in the project. As also noted, <clears throat> There is very serious help in the form of the latest equipment that allows accurate calculations. Gil took into this all into account. And the clerk wrote down all the questions and answers to them in order to provide a report later that the first stage of the Grazian project is close to completion. And there are only a few weeks left before the official translation or transition to a new stage. We'll show everyone Kuzkinu Mat. <coughs> Obviously, we don't want to go to war with anyone else right now, but we got to talk about Eden. Project Eden, more specifically. We still have a yearly deficit. Oh, there's a yearly deficit of 7.8% growth. Holy crap. Nice. Yeah. Failure. Edema. Oh, no. Nicola Sharon was sitting in his office until he received a letter from the Ministry of Defense. He created a supercomputer that could store all information about secret secrets and plans, as well as calculate the consequences of possible conflicts, as well as the development and modeling of new weapons. Moreover, such supercomputers can be used in the future to weaken the bureaucratic apparatus. Many agreed with this, of course. However, how can you create a supercomputer in Russia, where many do not even have such conventional electronics achievements as a telephone or radio? But still, we are scientists, not average residents of Russia. Therefore, Nikolai immediately set off to go to work. His team first encountered the creation of supercomputers, but thanks to the purchase of specialists and various scientific literature, it was possible to start uh, production. Initially, a large number of server computers were made that will be used in this large project. They will begin to they be then they began to be connected by a local high-speed highway to achieve maximum performance. Then, probably the most difficult part began, parallelization of the computer computational task. After all, the number of calculations performed per second mainly depends on it. Despite the advisors from the USA, a supercomputer didn't just work. So, server computers simply cannot withstand these calculations, as well as the redirects, which frankly was expected because they had never assembled servers. Therefore, they only had to extend the remaining money to the Ministry of Defense. It's better to use accounts. And at this point, we got to get ready because we can strike Siberia very soon. Um, I want to make sure we're fully entrenched. I know these guys are green. Maybe I should have not made them green, but, you know, whatever. These guys are not going to be easy. Quarter million. We have about roughly the same manpower, but we have way, like, roughly, literally, potentially double our division count, so. Um, just keep digging in for now. Keep digging in. 80% bonus max. 63, which is very strong. <coughs> of course, missing some transport helicopters, but whatever. Um, just hopefully with all the planes that we do have. I mean, that's just hopefully going to guarantee a success. These guys are 45 combos, which is pretty flippin' thick. I made sure that these daddies are thick daddies, so... I guess right now, we can probably just do that. See if they want to attack our lines. Because they're suffering quite a bit from attrition, which is very good to see. I like that a lot. But even though they have that, doesn't mean they're any part weak, so... Do we don't have trains? The trains will run on time no matter what, right? No? Huh. Oh, we don't have any trains. 
We should probably get some trains. No, we have no trains, huh? So. Alright. Well, we'll see about this. Nah, supplies not going to be super great up there. Makes sense. Um, I mean, at this point, it's a little bit too late to do all this stuff, but, you know what? We can still throw one maybe right here. Shabby run assassinated. Very cool. Um, it'd be trains under here, right? No. Oh! Attack Ellie's? Might as well get that stuff done. Forgot about that. My bad. Even better cast? Jesus Christ. And happy May 1st, everybody. Happy May. Savage price. Turn location is good. Are we dug in anymore yet? Because, oh, we are maxed out. Holy crap. Base is five. Strategic theorem. Well, it says we can win. And so far, it seems like we are winning. We lost 24,000 already. Not bad. Um, how's air battle? Well, they do have quite a few planes. And again, so do we. With 1,000 versus their 100 early fighters. We have 700 early fighters, a couple basic jet fighters, um, some advanced, some improved. We should be able to do this relatively easily. We killed off 60,000 of them already. Not bad. Pretty decent, I'd say, so far. Probably just grind that map out of nothing. They've lost 65, 66. Point one, not much. 14 is not bad. They lost one more there, whatever. Ah, but with their airplanes, it looks like the more. Uh, they can't replace their losses. Or they just haven't bothered to do so. Actually, we're deficit. We could lower our growth for more of that, but we can wait. It doesn't really matter. I'm just interested in destroying all the enemy planes. And early fighters are very in inferior to like advanced jet fighters. Even a hundred improved jet fighters. I kind of feel bad for their pilots. They've been just set up to fail. 21 damage, Jesus Christ. 109,000 losses, not enough. Well, they've not gotten that stuff done yet. Oh, good God, they lost over 200,000 manpower already. Love it! Level 8 attack. Jesus Christ, Sergei. 2 versus 6. I guess it's saying 3 versus 7 now. Still. Twitter 1000, not bad. Now 62, nice. Very nice. 7.4%, 13 billion in that. Take them all over. Enjoy ourselves. <coughs> this is Russian land. And more specifically, our Russian land. Nice. Nice. Maybe this one done either. More breakthrough in organization would be very helpful right now. We've only lost 7,000. Versus quarter. Holy shnikes. Cass is so strong. I love it. All the way to Magadan, please. Happy July, everybody. I think we're doing quite well. Oh, I hit the trains. Found them. Oh, Tosk will be ours. 300,000 dead. For literally no reason. Oh, half the entire air wing's been destroyed at this point. Literally over half now. Beautiful. Just keep shooting down their planes. As soon as they're all gone, I mean, we can do even more damage then. 43 left. It's a beautiful sight to see. We're going to have a lot of divisions. But my god, are they strong. A third of a million have died. And for what? Jesus Christ. How many, how many divisions have I left? Up to 54. Beautiful. Just find them and kill them. 2v4. 
Oh, it's so good. One of the best wars we've ever done on this channel against any of these enemies. Just gunning them down. 400,000 losses. 27 sh ships? No. Ships in the air? No. Planes. Just has so much damage. 40 some? Oh my goodness. Krasnoyarsk, please. Pitta. <coughs> Happy August. We still have over 800,000 manpower ourselves. These guys aren't even... They're still green. Less air detection, but more... Close air support defense. Nice. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's not even a division at this point. They're just guys around, running for their lives. Just keep pushing them. 1v6, over a river. Keep going, keep going. I know we're going to hit some really bad sides. Vlogtarsk? Vlogtarsk? Good. Oh, someone's actually giving us a run for our money. Too bad that division literally is going to die here. Jesus. How much pain and suffering do you want to inflict on the Russian people, man? All for what? Transport helicopters, main battle tanks, attack helicopters. We don't have that many. God, I'd love to throw some attack helicopters on here. Keep going. Over half a million are dead now. Beautiful. It's only three or three divisions. Eight divisions are holy crap, and these guys are completely cut off. So, very nice. Good. So that never sets good. It's all taken care of. Anything here? Yeah, go overwhelming attack. Why not? Kutz is a capital. <coughs> Good. How much longer? 71%. Two thirds of a million have died. Any more manpower? No, they're completely out of manpower. Stockpile wise, I got a couple planes left, some casts themselves. No guns, a couple interceptors, a couple infantry fighting vehicles. Hey, trains, nice. Happy September and October, everybody. Very cool. And extraction because we can. Ah, uh, the goods is now ours. Right? Oh no, it's almost ours. Beautiful. Three quarters of, of a million have almost died here. And for what? Tura. Tura, 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 Tura. Wrath of Heaven, we gotta read about that too. Ah! Got a good skinness. Berndudinsk. These men are just here to die. I mean, that's literally it. They've been sent to die.
Very good. I still have a deficit. 6% growth. Not bad. Ah! Adding, ooh! Increase admin efficiency. 6.2%. We live in the managerial age after all. Nice. 5.6% growth. Less of a deficit. And they're about 92% of the way there towards its complete capitulation. Beautiful. Well, that division looks really good, but it's not going to look very good for very long. No, it's not. <clears throat> All right. Chita. Chita, please. If you beat them up, why don't you go there? And then come back here and beat them up some more. Huh. Good. 94% of the way there. I apologize for taking so long with this. Just go ahead. Just go. Just go. Go, 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 go. God, it's got to be terrible to fight around here. Oh, happy December now. Over 800,000 dead. Oh, is it? Are they finally over or what? There we go. Nice. Time to come back to Kazakhstan, everybody. See what we can do against these guys here. All right. Let's return to the steps. Um, gives a little longer than that to do that one. Reunify the motherland. The bonus of the Siberian plan will be reduced by 45%. Success of synchronitism. Russia has always been uh, a place of struggle between two opposites, monarchical auto autocracy and socialist ideals. Uh, the two extreme Swiss systems waited uncompromising struggle in the territory of Russia with periodic success. Any person or place would either accept one of the sides or would choose a third way, but we went the other way. We found a compromise between the monarchy and the socialism which gave the result. If the Russians have created a truly unique country, unlike any other. A country or state can be slandered in any way, starting from monarchists with, with a left bias, ending with communists with a tsar at the head. We're neither one or the other. We are young Russians. The Russian people have trusted our leadership and vote. And vote. Uh, fate favors us to unite the whole Russia, which will stretch from the Vologda in the west of the Kamchatka in the east. The young state claims of laws of the past appear on the world map. This, without exaggeration, the car finally started moving after we got rid of the mistakes of the first creators and those who tried to fix it. A combination of monarchical and socialist ideas has given a truly resounding success, and the, which is possible only within Russia. And now this machine called Russia will move forward. Nobody will reproach us for not being able to. We did it. More recently, in less than a decade, Russia was once divided into many territories led by field commanders, has also become united again. Although the world was waiting for an era, of, uh, an era of, of divided Russia to end in order to establish diplomatic relations with a single government, and this government has become unified only under the leadership of the young Russians and Tsar Sergei uh, Belzersky. The perfect combination of monarchical and socialist ideas led to the fact that the Russian people got rid of the mistakes of the past governments and absorbed all the best from the Tsars in Soviet Russia. Political scientists say that with the advent of United Russia, the balance of power in the Cold War will change, but they don't know which side will uh, come out on top. And we can't get that one. Damn. Um, uh. And Belzersky has already stated that the enemies of Russia who have harmed her will ever pay for the ever for everything that suggests that the people's kingdom will go on its own unexplored. Long live young Russia. If you live in hatred and strife and quarrels, you will perish yourself and destroy the land of your fathers and grandfathers who extracted with their greatest labor. The Tsar. National holiday. A whole week has passed since the troops of our army reached the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. How much blood has been shed since the collapse of Russia has already been seen impossible to count, but all this is already over. Today, a day off was announced across the honor of the country in honor of such a grandiose event. Many celebrated in different ways. Someone with friends and various drinking buddies were, went storming bars and various kinds of entertainment establishments. Some went to official festive events, which were organized by the party of the young Russians by decree of its Tsar's Majesty, Sergei the First Unifier. And while ordinary people celebrated and rested, others continued to surf, and so the Tsar's foreign ministry was bursting with calls with congratulations from different countries. Even the Japanese government congratulated us and informed us that they would be happy to cooperate with Russia despite various grievances in the past. The military also had a hard time. The territory in the east was extremely extensive. Establishing a normal land border was still a task. However, it was less of a problem. A 
was unnecessary to deal with the various types of partisans remaining in the territory, but at least it was easier than fighting. What was the Tsar's cabinet doing at the time? Only the ministers and royal guard, who were now quartered near Novosibirsk, knew about this. When an important royal meeting was taking place at the time, in which the future of the entire Eurasian continent was being decided. It's time to arrive at the meeting. I'm not sure we have any more after this, so let's go with, uh, let's go with 10. We have a lot to core. We have, like, no growth right now. That's okay. <coughs> Legacy of Siberian plan, huh? The Royal Meeting. Say that again. I told you it was necessary to heat the bathhouse better, but something is not right at all. Kazimbek told Belazersky, unfortunately not a young Junker. Or Junker. Belazersky said in response to drown like that, we didn't have enough to die in this bathhouse, so it's better poor Cognac overseas, straight from America, darn it. Uh, Belazersky and Kazimbek were ranting about the bath and American Cognac. Two more heroes of the occasion came into the room. Alexei Kostyan and Vladimir Gill. Went up to the bath, went outside to get some fresh air. Sergei Sergeyevich, you could stop drinking at your age, otherwise the little will be very bad, Kostyan said from the doorway, after which he plopped down on the sofa. I know you, but it's a sin not to drink on such a day. Volva, are you going to drink, by the way? Belazersky retorted to Kostyan, after which he asked Gil a question. Gil, putting his glasses on the bedside table, then sitting down in an armchair, replied, Well, since the holiday is a sin not to drink, maybe I'll figure out where the, to test your bomb. Dow, what to think? We'll drop it on Berlin. That's a test for you. Alexei asked from his chair. Uh, that looks like a toast. The Belazersky raised his voice. Come on, comrades, on this beautiful day, let's drink to our motherland into the bombs over Berlin. Uh, something approached the table, took glasses, and lightly clicked glasses, shouting, For the motherland and for the bombs over Berlin. Okay, so here's the end of it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you for uh, for the devs who all created this. That's very good. Awesome. I love it. It's 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 not... Obviously, it's not written by English native English speakers, which is totally okay. You know, I get it. I think these are Russian speakers, probably, I assume. But, yeah. I, if the devs are watching, thank you for making this. I do I do appreciate this. I, I mean, I struggled with it earlier, and I was complaining about how much how many reading events there were, but in all honesty, I'd rather have it than not. So, I do want to thank the devs for you know, making this. So, if the devs are watching, thank you very much, and I appreciate your work that you've done to uh, make this mod. And I make and I mean that for oh, look at that guy. Oh my gosh, I love his hat. Um, yeah, I just think it's just great, and I hope more individuals create more mods for not just TNO but Hoi Four in general as well, because you got some really creative people create create some really awesome things. So, and the mods that I've disappointed or insulted, I apologize. I can be a dick sometimes, but Kazakh a branch of the party. Out of the conquest of Kazakhstan, it now makes sense to develop infrastructure there. Destroy what was available and restore the logistics from scratch so that this region develops at least in good conditions. However, before we start doing this, we must ensure our loyalty um, on the ground so that the local population does not resist us and does not spoil our lives for all of us. They need to develop our own party activities, and Kazakhstan is also important because it's literally our power. We start building the region without an established government, then we simply will not achieve anything. And therefore, we will need to make Mladorosia branches in Kazakhstan, including Kazakhs and the Russian speaking population. Railway guns would be fun, but let's go with this one. Failure, Wrath of Heaven. Oh, no! Nikolai Sherman was a real optimist. When he was told that the uh, <clears throat> Ministry of Defense requires a team of scientists to interpret the Gauss cannon for weapons, he can't contain his motion. Yes, it would be a killer cannon, but physics say otherwise. Common sense says the opposite. However, the order was in order. It was not difficult to assemble an ordinary Gauss cannon, but to create an expanded version of it. So it looks like a sniper rifle. It's a completely different matter. First, there's an expansion of the entire structure. The barrel was enlarged to create more speed, and a large number of capacitors were added. Then the design was added for this rifle to make it look like a sniper rifle, an optical sight, bipods, and so on. The town going to experience this activity. By pulling the trigger, the bullet quickly hit the target a distance of one kilometer. However, the weapon overheated very much. The shooter immediately threw it to th into the sand, however. And moreover, the low efficiency indicated a huge energy consumption. The energy that was wasted went up to warm the rifle. But, it's not, but it is the main feature of the Gauss gun. Low efficiency. There's no way to fix it. So it was decided to change the material from which the rifle was made to less heat conducting one. But the material that was found was very fragile, and it seems like the one shot the whole structure could simply disintegrate. Uh, Belzowski himself came to check his project. He was in the immediate vicinity of the cannon. He peered through the binoculars, looking at the target at a tank at a distance of a kilometer. Shot. The tank was pierced because it was no ricochet, and the shooter was Belzowski's bodyguard. Belzowski was delighted, but then he noticed how his guard was already holding it, not holding holding not the cannon, but its fragments. He demanded to ex an explanation. Why would a soldier need something that would just fall apart in one shot? Nikolai and everyone shrugged their shoulders, and Belzowski furiously walked away with his bodyguard. I saw him take off the rose colored glasses. How much of this is says? So, we two failures. You know, could be better, could be worse. Record most of the stuff. Western Russia is always impossible to integrate, so I'm not really upset about that either. So, let's take these guys out and then we'll do this one and keep, keep working on our focus tree, see what happens. Shouldn't take too much longer to take these guys out, though. These guys are way tougher than the other group. And again, I don't think we have good range here. We did that. 4.4%? Sight plus? Not bad. Not bad. <coughs> nice. 
Hey, better crit rating too. Look at that. We're at hey intermediate, not bad. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. Keep going, guys. You're doing great. Thousand versus fifty thousand, not bad. Who are we at war with? Just Kazakhstan? Okay. It's fine. Whatever. Alright, we get the Polish Legion as well. Um, Rustification of the paperwork. Officers working in any branch of this region differ sharply from what we have in Russia. It's rightly compiled, not in Russian, so to say nothing about the principles by which it is often made. Therefore, we must start rustifying officer work. Transfer all bureaucratic activities to the Russian rails, not only translate them from Kazakh into Russian, but also make a model of this activity in a purely Russian manner. Let's allow Kazakhstan to be integrated economically and politically into the Russian as soon as possible state, as will strengthen not only the potential of the region, but also the, our country in particular. Hey, I love it when the enemies are cut off. We can't do anything about it. I love it when they squirm and struggle. Happy March, everybody. 15.66 billion? Huh? Yeah, slowly getting better. Slowly but surely. Would you like to take out a division? There you go. Come on, guys. There's a capital. No, it's down here. Well, it does take a while to get down there, though. Are we even using recon? Yeah, we are. Okay. As long as we're using it, it's worth investing in. 89%. My goodness. It's taking forever to kill these guys off. Ah, oh, darn, that was this. Just get down there, you might break the picture of them completely. And we did. Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. In the open field, Alexander Kazenbeck was a good organizer, if not an excellent one. In general, there's a lot that speaks in the supports of the thesis, and the clearest proof is that the organizational work of the Mlederosi party, you would see in general who organized the entire work of the party and later the whole country. And even though he's only now prime minister, the importance of this person for the party cannot be overestimated. Without him, there would be no party. He's a skilled organizer, and Sergei Belozersky saw it well, and he understood perfectly well that Kazenbeck's talents could still be useful. It needs him now more than ever, because of just a few weeks ago, Kazakhstan. This became part of the Tsarist Union. And he needed to establish a power of the Mladerosi there. To do this, he intended to use Alexander so that he would be organize everything from scratch there. So that everything would work. Why is this the case? There are no normal civil and party governments in Kazakhstan now. There's only military occupation built there, which means that the government there will have to be built, in essence, from scratch, in an open field like the steps of Kazakhstan itself. But Lezetsky entrusted this care, too, the Kazan back and accepted the responsible job, not to say with great enthusiasm. The appointment of such a job means that Alexander will have to go to the work they did at the very dawn of the party, that is literally speaking to create a party from scratch. And besides, we'll have to be, he will need to be moved away from the capital directly to Kazakhstan, perhaps to Pavlodar, as he wants to develop city in order to cope with his assigned task more effectively. He, however, was not very upset because his deputy will replace him for a while. And so to Kazanbek, once the Kazakhstan to build party work there from scratch, you'll need to find supporters, spread the ideology, including new members in our membership, create councils from scratch, and so on, like in the good old days. And of course, we're still going to do this one, versification of the paperwork, but modernizing the step. Having established some kind of power in the territory of Kazakhstan, now makes sense to pour money in this country. One of the main problems in Kazakhstan is the absence of any objects of social significance, power plants, hospitals, schools, etc. The step is really empty of all of this, and therefore this region is now one of the most backward in the Tsarist Union, which means we'll need to make this region develop at the same good pace as the other territories in our country. Alexei Kostichin can develop a plan for the relatively rapid de development of this region from scratch, and although it'll take a little time, according to his own calculations, it'll be very problematic to build anything on the territory of Kazakhstan, and therefore it'll cost us a around some, but it shows us that everything will justify itself in the future. And we're going to save it real quick, just because I don't know what this tooltip is. It looks like we might be able to go to war with Germany, if it says this. The Mar WRW2 tooltip, new decisions will be available. You get 3% more war support, which is not bad, but I just want to see what it's like. I did convert our divisions back, which maybe was a bad thing, but whatever. Um, 
We are intermediate. And poverty rate change got way better. Holy crap. Way, way, way better. We're still trying to get better industrial expertise. Um, to go to innovative industry would be great. And functional administration is rapidly improving with nine a month, which is hopefully going to be eventually good, too, but still. <coughs> Russian standards. Guys and clerks in the administration were surprised by the fact that they have to uh, drop documents differently than before. In the building where they were, they brought new samples of filing out papers that are radically different from than those that they had before. The standards look both complicated and at the same time simple enough to master. But some were also confused by the fact that they didn't have to write out exclusively in Russian. Some were pissed by it, and some even left the administration because they simply did not speak Russian. Others, on the contrary, were encouraged only to start learning Russian, and many of them started learning learning language right in the field training. With great difficulties, I one spelling mistake and other problems such as Kazakhs were still able to master a foreign tongue at a basic level in order to write something and work in the administration. Still, others were immediately involved in the in effective work, but they also got used for a long time to the fact that they had to fill out documents using new forms. Russian administrators who arrived in Kazakhstan in order to monitor the quality of the administrative work performed at first sent many documents back for processing for a long time. There were problems in funds, distances between lines, distances between the boards of the sheet and the shortcomings, but then taught by better experience. The clerks still got involved in the work and were able to continue to work effectively. After all, Kazakh scribes knew that the new standards of writing documents, as seemed to them, were more convenient to them to use than what was before. Previously, there were only the beginnings of order, and now this order is everywhere. One standard, what an effect. <coughs> Establishing the governor, uh, general government. One of the latest transformations of the administration of the region will be the division of this region into smaller but more mo mobile and efficient general governance. If you keep this very large region as a whole, then it will be extremely difficult to manage this territory. Therefore, in order to avoid this, we will need to establish governance under governor generals who will know better how to develop this region from the, from the point of view of the economic and military sphere. Unequivocally, this would not solve all the problems of this region at once, but the administration, uh, administrative burden will drop sharply in the area, and the center will manage individual governor general more effectively. I apologize for speaking quickly. I'm just like, part of me just wants to get this done because I'm kind of tired of reading everything here, as we established before, but Kazakh's plan. Alexei Kostin could not come to Kazakhstan himself to assess the situation, but had enough. Of course, understand exactly what needs to be done to reverse a very bad situation in Kazakhstan. Oh, look at this. Oh, Bukhar and so. Oh, interesting. Um, to make sure that the people of Kazakhstan could receive enough benefits that are available in the abundance of Russia, he quickly made a plan of action, calculating everything down to a penny. The result was quite a tolerable economic development plan for this region. Kostin set this Kazakh plan back to uh, Plavlodar, where Kazanbek was currently located. I had received it at the very moment when I read this from scratch. I was somewhat surprised. First of all, I was surprised that in principle he started to do something other than party work. Secondly, I was surprised by the very large amount of money planned, uh, planned to be spent in Kazakhstan. The money is still very solid, it's worth saying, but the plan was designed primarily for long-term goals and therefore maybe payoffing in the future. Who, what the word, key word is can? Having no one against it, Kazanbek still had to accept the conditions and started making this notorious plan. It began feverish work on distributing deputies or duties in the execution of these decrees, using money for the budget. We all write a blooming garden from scratch. Just send you. You can do that. You guys convert along the way. It's fine. End of the Peronist regime in Argentina. Alright. <coughs> in 10 days, uh, diplomatic wait. Millennia. It's still going on, which is fine. And we still have a surplus with this, which is totally fine. 48% is not bad. Cool. Let them get on the front lines. I mean, they're extremely weak as well. Give them a couple days and we'll be fine. 3, 2, 1. Deal with Uzbekistan. Yes, please. Go ahead. I mean, divisions are extremely weak. But, it's alright. <coughs> Excuse me. They're extremely weak as well. Kazakh highways. There are few roads in Kazakhstan, even those that are available, they're often just well trodden steppe grass. At best, made by machines. There are very few normal asphalt roads in the territory of the country, and at best, there are a lot of cities built by Bukharin. There are also few railways that connect only the most important settlements, but even they do not cover all of them. Well, it was worth noting that due to the fact that they are literally often made with their own feet, they have quickly become mud and bad weather and prevent us from developing the region further. Therefore, it makes sense for us not to develop only urban infrastructure, but also road infrastructure. It's able to give a powerful economic impetus to development, since the process will be accelerated banally. We must invest in the creation of new high-quality paved and railways. Uh, this will give us a good incentive for the further development of the region. In addition, it also makes sense to develop existing roads, rebuild old roads, repair them, and even just this will give a powerful impetus to the development of the region. Banal bumps on the roads will not be. It will be more comfortable to drive around the region. Well, that's interesting. Where to kill 2,000 of them? Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Want more attack. Bond though. Drink till you die. 
for the most part. Um, get some better one of those. Uh, Polish Legion. <clears throat> the Polish state, which once existed on the territories of the Kazakhstan, is even some kind of foreign entity among all the other regions. It is such because, for the completely objective historical reasons, Poles simply should not be here in such a mass order. But unfortunately for the Poles, they ended up here because the German policy forced the Poles to flee their homeland. On the other hand, the Poles in Kazakhstan can only be a good gift for, of fate for us, especially in the future. These people who are very far from their own home can find this new home only here, in Kazakhstan, and can fight for the country against the Nazis for the liberation of their original motherland. So, Kazakhstan will find use for them, and will not uh, conflict with them from scratch. Is that the last one? 35? What does 35 mean? Can we go down here and kill them off? Um, experimental CVs. That's, yeah, maybe maybe that's it. Is it cool down 35 days, maybe? Maybe not? Ah. Yeah, this is going to take a while to connect everything here, isn't it? Polish Legion and Tsar's visit. Finally, having completed the main transformations of the territory of Kazakhstan, they were able to gain a put on this territory, making an initial infrastructure base there, and in general, we significantly secured a southern flank from a surprise attacks by anyone. The people were respected, some parties received new members and increased its influence in Kazakhstan. To complete the entire regiment of Kazakhstan, we should do the last, though not uh, obligatory, but important thing from the point of view of prestige and legitimacy. It'd be worthwhile to complete all the recent transformations with a trip to these steps from our own Tsar. Tsar Sergei Belazersky, and in this step will confirm the world community that Kazakhstan is now de definitely returned to the Russians and the Tsar's union in particular. Polish soldier of the Russian army. A battalion of recruited Polish-speaking soldiers take a somewhat unusual oath. They swear not only to the Russian army, but also to the Polish people for faithful service for the liberation of their homeland from the occupiers and the person of the Reich. <clears throat> they were personally invited by Kazimbek, who recently arrived in Kazakhstan, and since he's aware of their presence, he said to find use for them, especially considering that the Poles will definitely be happy to fight the Nazis. <coughs> Excuse me. I solemnly swear by the bloodstained Polish land and the Polish people to fight against the German invaders for the liberation of the motherland and for strengthening friendly ties with the Russian people. I swear to reliably and faithfully fulfill the duties of the Polish legionnaire of the Russian or of the Russian Tsar's army. Faithfully carry out the orders given to me and strictly observe military secrecy. I swear to faithfully serve the allied duty of the Tsar's union and never desecrate the name of my compatriots. I swear to be a loyal ally to the Tsar's union and my supreme power of the Polish people. I swear to unflinchingly defend free Polish citizens and help the Russian people in the fight against German fascism. God help me. Hard times or legionary? One, two, three. Okay, then. Experience CV is not bad. Overall, that's not bad actually at all. That's pretty good. Um, Russian Eagle is pretty strong as well. Russian volunteers, of course, that doesn't really work. And thriving economy. Well, let's finish with the Tsar's uh, visit. What does 35 mean? Yeah. Of course, we're still trying to integrate Western Mongolia, but what else is new? Hey, we're going up modern agriculture. Oh, we already have it. Better industrial XP, so that's very good. Yay! We have flamethrower threes before we have flamethrower twos. But I'm not really going to complain. The Tsar's visit from the step to the city. Tsar Belzersk and Prime Minister Kazimbek visited several major cities on the territory of Kazakhstan. In addition to Pavlodar itself, Karaganda, Amkmolinsk, Petropavlovsk, Konstantin, Aktobe, Uralsk, and a number of smaller cities were also visited. The journey did not take much time, but it was decent, since the distances between the cities are quite large. The Tsar's impressions <coughs> of, uh, were not overshadowed by any incidents. However, the journey itself left some mixed feelings, of course. Firstly, he liked the very existence of the railway and the way it was done very efficiently. Secondly, when visiting cities, he was glad that the population greeted him joyfully, although not as triumphant. The population, though, thanked him and all the authorities for bringing to Kazakhstan many benefits of civilization that had gone into desolation before them. Thirdly, the work of administration, factories, and entertainment centers, and everything else that should give the ordinary citizens the greatest convenience in life, was reviewed and checked, and the condition of many cities satisfied the wishes of the Tsar himself. But there were also negative aspects. The Tsar was not satisfied with the fact that the territories between the cities were still in desolation. A lot of things are either not processed or not used, and the distances between large cities themselves were very, very large, which generally does not please Sergei. These territories, according to the Tsar, should be inhabited by as many people as possible, but nothing has been done for this. Perhaps it will be all fixed over time, but that fact remains. It's worth noting that Kazan Beck and Belzerski talked a lot about on various business topics and just about life during the trip. We discussed the same Kazakhstan, what difficulties there were in creating all these conditions and other things. Kazan Beck and perhaps Tsar Sergei Belzerski himself could relax from hard work for the first time in such a long time. After traveling around Kazakhstan, the Tsar's a delegation already together with the Prime Minister wished to go back to the capital already together by plane. There's still a lot of work to do. I assume that's pretty much it. Well, we should have one more event and that should be it. Well, maybe, because uh, this mod's probably not done yet. I mean, like I said earlier um, in this campaign, um, there, this mod might get worked on in the future. So, 
Hey, 50% more stability. We didn't need it, but hey, I'll take it. Yeah, this mod, it might get worked on in the future. We'll see. We didn't even get, was it Norlsk? All this here to appear under us, which does kind of suck. So actually, you know what? Screw with that. Oh, he's falling ill. That's not good. Give me that. Thank you very much. That looks way better now. Oh, it already cored. Okay. I almost never use the stage to mob, but I think that's probably going to be it for us for this uh, campaign. If you enjoyed it, do consider leaving a fat booty uh, Belzerski like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, I just developed. Uh, uh, and I guess I'll probably see you in another campaign tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, great Russian people's sardom rest of your day.